So we're told here that f of x is equal to this infinite series. And we need to figure out what is the third derivative of f evaluated at x equals zero. And like always, pause this video and see if you can work it out on your own before we do it together. All right, so there's two ways to approach this. One is we could just take the derivative of this expression while it's in sigma notation. The other way we do it is we could just expand out f of x and take the derivative three times and see if we get an answer that, I guess, makes sense. So let me do it the second way first. So let me just expand it out. f of x is equal to, let's see, when n is equal to zero, this is negative one to the zero, which is just one, times x times x to the zero plus three. So it's going to be x to the third over two times zero, so that's zero plus one factorial. So that's just going to be over one. Then the next term, when n is equal to one, well now it's going to be negative one to the one, so now we're just going to have a negative out front negative, and it's going to be two times one plus three. So that's going to be x to the fifth, x to the fifth power, over two times one plus one. So that's going to be two plus one is three factorial, so it's going to be x to the fifth over six. And then when x is equal to two, it's, this is going to be positive again. It's going to be x to the seventh power, x to the seventh power over, five factorial, is that right? Yeah, five factorial, and five factorial, actually let me just write that out as five factorial. Five factorial would be, what, it would be 120. It'd be five times four times six, so it'd be 120. But we could just keep going, minus, plus, and it goes on and on and on forever. Well now let's just take the derivatives. So f prime of x is going to be equal to, we're just applying the power rule here, it's going to be three x squared minus five sixths x to the fourth plus seven over five factorial x to the sixth. I'm just applying the power rule. Minus plus, we just keep going on and on and on forever. The second derivative, f prime prime of x, is going to be equal to, apply the power rule again. It's going to be six x to the first minus four times five over six. I'll just write that as 20 over six, x to the third, plus six times seven, so it's 42 over five factorial, x to the fifth, and we're just gonna keep on going, minus, plus, keep going, or alternate between minus something, then plus something, on and on and on forever. And then we get to the third derivative. The third derivative is equal to, let's see, the derivative of six x is six, and then we have minus 20 times three is, 60 over six, which of course is 10, x squared, plus five times 42 is what, 210 over five factorial times x to the fourth power minus plus over and over and over again. And then we just evaluate this at zero. f prime 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 at zero. Well, when x is equal to zero, all of these terms with x's are gonna go to zero, and you're just gonna be left with this six here. So f prime prime, at the third derivative evaluated at zero is just equal to six. Now another way that we could have tackled this is just kept it in this sigma notation. So we could have said that f prime of x is equal to the infinite sum. And actually, let me, let me line them up. So this is where we did f prime of x expanded out, but we could have said f prime of x is equal to the sum from n equals zero to infinity. And you take the derivative here, you're gonna get and you're taking the derivative with respect to x. So for that purpose, you assume everything else is, uh, uh, well, the n is just gonna tell us which term we're, is gonna tell us how we change from term to term. So if we take the derivative with respect to x here, use the power rule, bring the two n plus three out front. So it's gonna be negative one to the n times two n plus three times x to the, decrement the exponent, two n plus two over two n plus one factorial. And then if you wanted to take the second derivative, and this is the same thing as this. If you take the second derivative, f prime prime of x, well now we're taking the sum from zero to infinity of negative one to the n. Let me move over to the right a little bit so we have some space. And now we take this exponent out front. So you're gonna have two n plus three times two n plus two all of that's going to be over 2n plus one factorial. 
And this is going to be times x to the 2n plus 1. All I'm doing every time, it seems really complicated. I'm just taking the exponent out front, multiplying it out front, and then decrementing it. So 2n plus 2 minus 1 is 2n plus 1. And then if I want to take the third derivative, the third derivative is the sum, n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n. We take this, bring it, multiply it. So we're going to have 2n plus 3 times 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1. All of that over 2n plus 1 factorial. And then that is going to be times x to the x to the 2n x to the 2n power. Now let's now evaluate this thing when x is equal to 0. So f prime 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 of 0 is going to be the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the nth power. Now this is going to be interesting. We're going to have all this business. 2n plus 3 times 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1. All of that over 2n plus 1 factorial times 0 to the 2n power. Now you might be tempted to say, well, hey, if zero to these different you know, powers, maybe everything's going to be zero. But remember, we're starting at n equals zero. So for any n that's not equal to zero, this zero to that power is just going to be zero, and that, that term's going to disappear, kind of like what we saw when we expanded it out. And so the only term that matters here is when n is equal to zero. And so this is just going to be equal to, because for n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to infinity, this, this thing is going to dominate. It's just going to multiply. It's going to be 0, and you're just going to zero everything out. And so this is just going to reduce to the, fir the first term when n equals 0. And when n equals 0, it's going to be negative 1 to the 0. This is going to be, which is just 1. So I'll just let me just write that as 1 times, this is 3 times 2 times 1 over 1 factorial, and then times 0 to the 0, which is equal to 1. So this is equal to 1, and so this is equal to 6. So either way, I think the first way we did it was a little bit more, a little bit more straightforward, a little bit more intuitive, uh, closer to what you might have seen before. But it's important to realize that we did the same thing both times. We just kept it in the sigma notation on uh, this time to the right. And this, this technique is useful because uh, you'll see it a lot in math, where you might want to do things in a little bit more of a general way. And so it might be helpful to take the derivatives while you stay in that sigma notation.